everyone, this video is going to be about the distinction between AS, INDAS and IFRS. Before we get on to understand what are the differences between AS, INDAS and IFRS, let's get a brief understanding of what is an accounting standard. Accounting standard refers to those basic principles or guidelines that basically define the financial reporting process. Now, India already had a set of accounting standards which were issued by the ASB or the Accounting Standard Board which comes under the purview of the ICAI. But with the recent trends, we have seen that India has adopted the new set of standards which is called as the INDAS or the account, Indian Accounting Standards which are a converged version of the IFRS that is the International Financial Reporting Standards which have been formulated by the IASB, International Accounting Standards Board. Now, it is a statutory requirement that the IFRS cannot be implemented in India. Hence, India has adopted the same by modifying some of the versions yet retaining the core concept of IFRS and the end result is the INDAS. Going forward, we will be looking at the differences between AS, INDAS and IFRS on two certain concepts. Now let's look at the differences in AS, INDAS and IFRS in relation to revenue from customer contracts. First let's look at AS. In case of AS, there is no one comprehensive standard that deals with revenue from customer contracts. There are only two related uh, standards that is AS9 revenue recognition and AS7 construction contracts. AS9 deals with recognition of revenue arising from ordinary course of business which can be anything like sale of goods or rendering of services or any activities that might bring either interest or dividend or royalties. The most important concept in AS9 is that revenue will be recognized only when there is a proper transfer of the significant risk and rewards of ownership from one party to another party. So unless there is no proper transfer, you cannot recognize revenue. Now let's look at AS7, construction contracts. This standard mainly deals with recognition of revenue arising from construction contracts. Under this, the most important thing is that if the entity can estimate the outcome of the contract and can estimate it reliably, then the entity can recognize contract revenue and contract cost based on percentage completion method. But if the entity cannot get a reliable estimate, then the contract revenue is only recognized up to the contract cost incurred and to the extent of which recovery is possible. Okay, now let's come and look at INDAS and IFRS. Revenue from customer contracts in case of INDAS is dealt with under INDAS 115 and in case of IFRS is dealt with in IFRS 15. Now, there is no major difference between INDAS 115 and IFRS 15 but there exists a huge difference between when you see AS. The major reason for such difference is because of the five-step model of revenue recognition. As per this model, Revenue can be recognized only if the five steps can be satisfied. The step number one states that we need to identify contracts with customers. This means that revenue will be recognized only if the contract that you are entering into has the counterparty to be a customer. If it's not a customer, then the whole revenue recognition does not fall under this standard. Step number two states that we need to determine the transaction price. So transaction price refers to the price that the entity will pay for the entire contract. Step number three says that we need to identify the performance obligations in the contract. Now what is meant by performance obligation? Performance obligation is nothing but what the entity promises to deliver to the customer in that particular contract. So that also has to be clearly defined in the contract. Step number four. Step number four mainly talks about the whatever transaction price that we have calculated in step number two has to be allocated to each and every performance obligation identified. Step number five says that finally revenue will be recognized only and until when the performance obligations are satisfied. Now this might sound a bit too big so let me explain it through a good example. An entity enters into a contract with a customer to deliver a machine as well as provide installation services for $500. In this case, how do we recognize revenue? 
As per the five step model, we need to go through each of the five steps. Now first step says that we need to identify if the contract is with a customer. Now this question clearly states that the contract is with a customer. Step number two says determine the transaction price. In our question, the transaction price is $500. Now if you come to point three, we have to identify the performance obligations. In this contract, there are two performance obligations. One is delivery of the machine and the second one is delivery of the installation services. Fourth point says we need to allocate the transaction price to each individual performance obligation. Now, in uh, the current market scenario, individual machine and individual installation might be given for a separate price. So, the $500 of transaction price has to be allocated to the individual performance obligations based on the separable current market price in the market. Point number five is recognized revenue. Now this recognition of revenue is only when the entity has fulfilled the performance obligations. Let's say suppose the entity has fulfilled and has delivered the machine, then the entity can recognize revenue only up to the machine. And later on, when it fulfills the installation services, it will record revenue up to that point also. With this, we come to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed.